Welcome to Let's Play The Eternal City. Now, it's probably a game you haven't heard of before, given the fact that it's a text-based, role-playing, low-fantasy game, loosely based on ancient Rome. Now, hold it, you're probably thinking. A Let's Play of a text-based game? Why not just do a Let's Play of reading a novel? Because shut up. Like any other MMORPG, the real draw of the game lies in the guts of it. The mechanics, the immersion factor, the social aspects, PvP, and PvE all contribute to what makes a game worth playing. The Eternal City comes through strong in each of these features. Now, as you can see, the Eternal City is hosted on Skotos Online Gaming. They also host several other games, most of which are also text-based. So I'll just click on this link. It brings up the main page for the Eternal City. On this page, you can see events that are happening in-game. We have something on Tuesday, something on Monday. I'll go to play now. Here we're presented with several clients we can choose to enter the game with. We have Java, in two different resolutions. If you use Internet Explorer, you can use ActiveX. Use Firefox, I do. We have Zealotry, and a Flash client, which should work with whatever Internet browser you use. I'll just click on Zealotry. Expand. Here we have the client. Um, pretty nice looking. Um, we have someone dressed in Roman garb on this side. A little map, which I currently have disabled, but could be useful for new players of the game. It'll constantly update as you move through the game. And let's see where we are right now. Logged in, 12 million people, blah, blah, blah. Right now we're in the welcome room of the game. This game, uh, this part of the game is where people usually hang out. We're not actually in the actual game itself. Players are in here. You can see a few people. Nobody seems to be talking right now. I'll type in play. And this will bring me to my character manager. See, I have three guys lined up here. From here, you can also create a new character. If it's your first time playing, you'll have to do that. Delete a character, and a few more options. We won't get into those right now. So, let's see. Let's just get right into the game. Get my game face on. I'll choose Dan as A. He's my main character, and I'll enter the game. You get a little message what time it is, time of the year it is in game. And a brief room description for where my character just woke up. As you can see, uh, he, uh, I woke up in a tavern. I get a little description. If I want to learn more, I'll type and look. Let's see what we got going on here. So it looks like just me and the barkeeper are here. As you can see, the game is really well detailed. Pretty much each room in the game has its own unique description, which really helps set the atmosphere. Right now I'm in a tavern, several feet below the streets outside. Oh, we got we got a painting up here. Take a look at that. Oh, well, and so nude woman. Oh, my character finds that embarrassing. He's blushing a little. Oh, we have the barkeeper here. Take a look at her. Don't know if I approve of that hairstyle. So you might also notice what's going on. Um, I see people thinking out loud. This is basically a global communication system in a game. Anyone can do it. I'll demonstrate in a second. Let me just step outside. So you can see I'm navigating with the cardinal directions, obviously. Stepped outside the door. Now, my character, this guy, he is a constable, so he enforces laws in the city. Uh, might know some random capitalization. That's just role-playing. He's intense. So I'm just thinking out loud, letting people know my character is around, doing his job. Oh, see? Somebody feels safer. Respond to her. Alright, I'm on a jury walk right now. Let's take a look here, too. Get some more of these room descriptions in. Might be thinking, whoa, what's going on here? Crumlin Road, jury walk. 
what kind of eternal city is this? Well, right now, my character is in what's called the steps in the game. Basically, it's a slum. I mean, there's a lot to take in in this game. At any time, you can type in help, and if you're using the Zelo Tree client, like I am Firefox, it'll bring up a nice little uh, pop-up window where you can, you know, peruse, learn about the game. I mean, there's a lot of lore to learn about in this game. I would recommend reading up a bit before you get into it, just so you get a feel of what it's going to be like. Ah, uh, look at this guy, trolling me. You know, I don't have time to respond to him right now, so I'm not going to. So right now, my character's in the steps. Let's let's just go through a normal day with him. We'll get out of the steps first. Continue along this jury walk. Pretty depressing. Take another look here. Yes, yeah, there's some graffiti on the wall. Look at that. I have. Oh, look at this. Some smart Alec. Um, Roman numerals, I have 99 problems, and a lawman's one of them. Now, this is typical to this area of the city. They, they don't like people enforcing laws here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out. Nope. NPC lawkeeper here. Give him a quick salute. He's a co-worker. And I'm heading back to the city proper. Now, we got moving down. We got the rooms down. Let's get to the mechanics of the game. Which really is one of the stronger, stronger features of this game. Just moving, just moving. Moving through the hospice, the healers hang out. Whoop, going up. Or north, rather. See, so at any time I can just pause, type in look. Get a bigger description of what's going on around me. I see there's a crowd of people. There's NPCs in a crowd. Given that it's morning, just turned morning, the sun's just coming up. The crowd's not too big. People are still waking up in the game. Alright, I'm where I want to be. Walk to this gate. Got a few more NPCs here. Oops, I gotta pay before I can get through. Tell her I want to pay. Yep, she just took the money on my bank account. Alright, head through. Now, get a load of this. I'll type in train here. See, this is typical of any skill set in this game that your character can learn. I mean, look at the variety of attacks. There, There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot to take in. Now, this is pancreation. Um, it's a type of unarmed fighting in the game. There are a lot of other weapon skill sets I'll also show an example of in just a bit. But you can see we've got attacks. Lead palm, rising palm. Setting piece with my palms and elbows. And we also have blocks. Most weapon skill sets also come with their own set of blocks. Uh, it's a bit complex. I'll get into a little. For example, um, I can throw out a lead palm. And that attack will go up against a a bunch of different blocks depending on whatever um, skill set I'm fighting against and dodges as well. We've got a lot of banter going on in thoughts. But uh, look at this. Because it's unarmed, um, an armed style of, unarmed style of fighting, Precranishan also has unique grappling moves, which along with uh, brawling Adds, it, it really adds flavor to the skill set. Let's get out of here. And head to a different trainer. Here, this NPC trainer teaches several different skill sets. We have spears. Again, just look. Look at the variety of attacks and blocks. He also teaches swords. And knives. Now, each skill set is pretty intuitive. Like, you'd expect knives to be a quick attacking 
fast skill set, and you'd be right. But look at the flavor moves, though. I mean, they really add to the skill set. We got stealthy draw. You don't want somebody to see you take out your weapon. Nope. Oh, just get that knife in your hand without them seeing. Wrist dancing. You want to be fancy. Just have that have that knife you know, twirl around your hand and whatnot. It's underhand stab. I mean, each skill set's really well thought out, and there's a lot of time and effort put into it. I mean, this game's been around for over a decade. There's been a lot of time for balancing. And as you can imagine, there is a competitive PvP scene in this game. Alright, let's see these mechanics put to work. I will have my guy scoot on over to the Coliseum. Nope, moving, moving. Uh, oh, I uh, took a wrong turn. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's get inside here. Pause for a second. Make sure no one else is out on the sands. Looks clear. Let's get out there. Alright, I'm at the center of the arena floor. I mean, just look at this. There are several clump patches of sand nearby where blood pools have been covered. You know, that's foreshadowing. This is where this is where epic stuff happens. Nope. There's a gladiator moving. I will move towards him. Oh, there he is. Let's, let's get close. Let's see, let's see this. Ah, no, it's a whipper. Yeah. There's the gladiator. Alright, let's, let's get started. Now, you can see how combat flows in this game. It is incredibly quick. I'm sorry if this is hard to follow. See, this this gladiator is having a bit of trouble. Oh, never mind. Ah, that hit me. Every single action in this game is based off of... Um, you can either roll anywhere between 1 and 100. You can see the success is usually 95. That's the worst success you can have. Oh, I'm taking some hits here. I got cut on the face. Let me start fighting back. Whoops. Oh, I gotta have my hands free. Ah, look at that. See, this is a beauty of this combat system. The critical hit system. Just look at that. The grazing hit barely manages to scrape a gladiator's arm. Alright, that's not that great. But most of them are really well written. Ah, there we go. Broken bone. A painful crack is heard when the left hand comes down hard and fast in a gladiator's hand. Oh, someone else is joining me here, and he's cracking a whip in front of my face. I don't know why. Gotta respond to that. See, while I'm fighting, though, I'm actually also training. The Eternal City uses a classless and level a system of character progression. I mean, each successful attack I use, I'm actually gaining skill points within the respective skill set. You can see I'm using different attacks, lead palm, uh, whoops, forward elbow, and each time I land a successful attack, as in I'm rolling higher than my success, I am actually gaining skill points. Ah, that was a good one. Oh. Ouch. Ah. Alright, I'll leave. I'll leave these two goons to fight each other. My guy doesn't much like Pleaston as a character. I'm out of here. Alright, you got a little dose of combat. But maybe you're thinking, eh, oh, combat's not my thing. These mechanics applied equally to the non-combat skill sets in a game? Yes. They are. <laughs> I'll head over to the hospice and show you an example of the healing skill set. Oop, getting a little lost here. Alright, here we have Iscara. I'll bring up what she's teaching. I mean, the same amount of variety is applied to non-combat skill sets, too. I mean, here we have, you know, basic things. Bandings, your wound, rousing, which we can bring uh, a conscious people back. 
back around for at least a few seconds. I mean, everything. Stitching wounds during combat, you're liable to eventually end up bleeding or with a broken bone. Stitch that up. Set that bone. I mean, there's a lot to this game, even if combat is not your thing. Alright, mechanics aside, what about the social aspect of this game? I mean, you see people thinking out and stuff, but I haven't really gotten any face-to-face -face time with anybody. Let's see if we can change that. I'll wander around for a second, start heading towards the hub of the city, where most characters spend their time. Oops, sorry about that. Alright, let's keep going. Nope, there's somebody there. Let's see what happens. There, how'd you like that? Soul Center Interaction at its finest. Wait, you're probably thinking. All you do is just walk in, yell at that poor lady for no reason. Well, if you want to play a character that has meaningful, deep conversations with people, you can. My guy does not do that. That's role-playing for you. Alright, we got the social aspect down. See the mechanics at work. Let's head to a part of the game called Rock Valley, where a lot of the um like the top end PV P PVE rather um content of the game is located. It takes a while to get there, so I'm probably going to fast forward as soon as I get to where I want to be. Okay, my character has made it out of the city and is now in Rock Valley. This is an area of the game completely separate from the city. Uh, you can tell just by the description around me how different it is. I'm out in the wilderness. We got full hills around me. Uh, there's a mountain nearby to the north. And this portion of the game, in my opinion, has the best PvE content available. I'm about to start a run-through, one of the basically top-end PvE areas of the game, called the Burial Grounds. It is, is, it's pretty difficult, but also it has an amazing atmosphere. I mean, the Burial Grounds are, well, the Burial Grounds for um, the nearby Barbarians. And some characters might... Might not go for something like this, but my guy does not care. He will raid these barbarian burial grounds. And let's get this started. Head down, we got a steam laden cavern. Let's get through. Oop, it's dark. Get my lantern out. Now, I know I mentioned at the beginning of this Let's Play that The Eternal City is a low fantasy game, and it is. Basically, this area has pretty much the most um, fantastic elements in the game. You'll see when I start running into... Oh, there's a stat check. and see my agility was checked to make sure I didn't get hit by the burning steam. Yeah, but this area requires a certain uh, suspension of belief. Oh, see what we got here. A carrion slug. Take a look at this ugly guy. He's a big slug. And this is my first stop. We got two um, large jars here that I'm about to try to pull something out of. 
Let me get my combat stance. And let's get this started. See, we got some. Oh, the slugs in a way. And I'm being crazy. Okay. Unfortunately, as a hand to hand fighter, as I hit this slug, I'm going to have um, acid burning into me. If I use an actual weapon, this wouldn't be so much of a problem. It would be my weapon taking the damage. So let's beat up this slug. Oh, there he goes. Look at, he's spitting acid at me. Now, I am taking some damage from this acid. You can see I'm losing health points. Not too quick, though. I should be able to take this guy out before... I suffer some real damage. There's some stuff going on elsewhere. I notice Oculos around, who my character has been trying to track down for, I don't know, a while now. I'm going to have to rush back to the city after this. Up, oh, jeez, there it goes. The slug just blew up. And that hurt. It might have... The ass, it might have splashed me in the face. I don't know what happened, but ow. Let me try this again. Oh, there we go. After taking out the slug, I was able to reach into the amphora, which is just a, a big... Let me take a look at it. A big jar. Big bowl. And I got a tear out of it, a crystal tear. Now we'll see the significance of that in a second. Just put that away. I think that's the only jar here. Yep, so let's move on deeper into this place. Walking along this narrow cliff path. I mean, this, there's a ruddy red glow. I assume I'm, I'm walking right next to lava or something. Get through this quick. Pause here a sec. Check up the stairwell. Alright, looks clear. Let's get in here. Now, in this particular room, we have two amphoras for me to try to get a tier from. I'll just do one of them, and then we'll end this quick let's play here. We got a slug in the way, and what... Uh, and Obsidian Scarab, who will take some tactics to take down. I'll take down the slug first. Same thing, getting hit by acid as I hit him. A little roly-poly Scarab's trying to hit me. Now pay attention to that. See that Scarab lowers itself in its shell? That is going to determine how I fight him in just a bit. Oh, slug just blew up again. Again, that hurts. It must be splashing me on an exposed part of my character. That neck, face, I don't know. Alright, take care of the scarab. See now, see watch that. The scarab lifts itself up, revealing itself. So now I can get some hits in. See, see that? I made a mistake there. Tried to attack him while he's... Oh, let's do it for an example. But see? I gotta wait for him to reveal itself before I can do any damage. Oh, that was a good hit. That hurt him. Oops. There we go again. Luckily, he has trouble hitting me, else that would be hurting. <laughs> I gotta get some hits in. Yeah, come on. Doop, doop, doop. Nope. 
Come on. There we go. Ah. Scarabs can take a lot of hits. Well, that would have been a good one, but attacked him at the wrong time. Hold my attacks for now while he's in his shell. You should be going down soon, I don't know. Oops. Oh, jeez, I'm botching this. Oh, yeah, what is this? And that takes care of him. Let's get that crystal tear out of the jar. My reward for taking out those guys. And I will get out of this room for now and check out my treasure. Now, these crystal tears, they offer an opportunity to gain skill points, if you remember, without actual training. Like, obviously, I was gaining skill points during all that because I was using skills, like my pancreation, and that was going up the whole time. But watch when I crack this tier. See, isn't that... that's... See, that's pretty cool. This is about as magical as it gets in this game. Um, these crystal tears apparently hold um, the memories of the ancestors of the barbarians or whatever, so you can just come down to the burial grounds and swipe them. Which is, I guess that is pretty terrible. But you can crack these tears, and you can gain skill points without actual training. For example, that tier, I believe, had um, a tree on it. If I had the relevant skills... That would have given me um, some knowledge of outdoors, which my character previously had, that's why it's in this list. Or uh, hunting lore, which are two other non-combat skill sets in this game. But because he doesn't, he just gained general skill points. And that wraps up this Let's Play. Thanks for watching.